Whether you have image files like this, even with handwriting or not so well put together tables, or whether you have PDFs that might be one page PDFs on a table or might be a table that spans multiple pages on a PDF or even multiple PDF files in a folder with the same format. You might wanna bring those into Excel. And the new Office 365 together with the Office mobile app have ways to do this built in. Or if you want something more sophisticated, I will also go through third-party software, how to import pretty much any of these into Excel. By the way, my name is David Benayim and I have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Teams, Zoom, Word, Outlook. So if you like what you see, then subscribe to my channel. I try to make a new video around once a week with new content. So check it out if you want more. So let's get started. So here we are in Excel, and I'm going to import this table on the right into Excel. This is a PDF file. It is one that I printed directly from Excel, so it is recognizing the characters, and that is kind of what you need to happen to make it import well into Excel. Although, as I said, image files we will cover later on. So if you go to the Data tab in Excel, you can choose Get Data from File and from PDF, only available in the new Office 365. And you navigate to the folder where it is, and I'm gonna choose this one and press import. I get this that pops up and I can choose between the table, which is what I Excel identifies as the table, or the page. Uh, the difference is the page has the title as well, and it would have other stuff around it as well. But um, my advice is go for the page if you're a beginner, because otherwise it might not necessarily recognize everything exactly what it needs to be, and then click on load, and here you can get the simplest version of it without needing to go into Power Query. Now, obviously, all of this stuff we don't want, and our table clearly starts here rather than up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this data right to the end, and then I'm going to cut and go to the top and paste. And then it puts it up here, and it looks pretty good. And you can see I have these two blank rows. I can drag this up to get it to complete there. Notice that this is using an Excel feature called table. So I have this table design tab. You can change the format to do lots and lots of other things. Uh, you can get to it by clicking insert table. Usually I highly value using this kind of structured table. Um, I have another video covering it that I'll link to as well here. Next, let's look at getting a data from an image file. And this is available on mobile phone devices as well as uh, tablets, but ironically, it's not available for PC, but only Microsoft 365 for Mac. Now, I'm sure that will come in future, but for now, it's only available like that. So I'm going to show you how to do it from the mobile app because I don't have a Mac, but then later I'm going to show you how to do it in a better way with more extravagant table image examples using this website that I love. So here I'm in the Office app. And you can get this for free from either the Google Play Store or the App Store. And then you can press plus on the bottom middle and choose Excel. And then I'm going to click on scan table. I'm not going to scan it right now. I'm going to use an existing one. This is an image here. The middle bottom button just like gets rid of the cropping and press confirm. It will then load it up like this with the Excel file at the bottom. You can see it's done a fairly good job. It hasn't got it exact, but you know it's not put J in KJ, it's put this kind of square bracket, but it's good enough probably, so I'm going to press open. It does say that I have some items for review, but usually I just manually review them later on, so I click open anyway. And then it's put them like that into a table. If you're in the Excel app already, you can click on the button with a camera and the grid, and then you can choose another table. Here, I'm going to manually adjust the cropping. It's a lot more difficult to table to get it to work. So if I press confirm, then you can see I have multi-row headers. I also had the Cambodian Khmer script. So it's not done a great job. And even with the numbers, as you can see, it's not really extracted any of them except for one or two. So if I press insert and open anyway, it just doesn't always work that well. And that's why the next example uses an app that I much prefer. So here we have another one that I really like, which is called extracttable.com. And this has a free 
application that you can use it for up to two per day for free, um, only on images, not on PDFs. But I'll show you how to get images to become PDFs. So here I have the ones I want to get in, and I've got some really, really advanced ones like handwritten. Let's see how it fares for that. So this one didn't work quite well on the mobile app, so I'm going to drag that into here. And then I'm going to press OK. It's going to here, and if I expand it, I can see that it has done a pretty decent job at getting the image. It's not perfect, especially since I'm using non-Latin characters, but it's done a decent job, and then I can manipulate it with a little bit of copy and paste. It's worked with a lot of the merge cells and done anything that I need to adjust. Also, you can just copy the table directly from here. So copy to clipboard, and then you can just paste it into Excel. Or if you want to download it as an Excel file, you can do that as well. You can edit it in here without exporting it first, but usually I just copy to clipboard and then edit to Excel. So if I go back to Excel, I can paste it, and then it is pasting it into Excel like this. So now let's look at a handwritten one. So same way, I'm going to drag this into here. And if I show it on the right, it's... Uh, <laughs> My handwriting, which is never any good, it's done an okay job. It's put in the numbers in here and then some of the text in here, but it's done a decent job considering it was handwritten, which is quite nice. So again, I can copy to clipboard, or if I want to, I can download as an Excel or CSV file as well. And over here, it's put it like that there. Now, if I want to fix this one up a little bit, what I can do is I can use flash fill. So I can say this is number three and I can select the column and go to the data tab and choose flash fill is up here. And then it's extracted those numbers. Then let's extract the text. So copy that and paste it here. Select the whole column and go to flash fill again. I love flash fill, I have another video about it. And then it has done a decent job at splitting this one as well. Um, I could transform these to make them uppercase, lowercase, and this is taken TH instead of a number. It's not perfect, but considering it was handwritten, it did an okay job. So what about if you have a PDF and you want to use this? Um, it says it only works with PNG JPEGs in the demo, Pro version allows PDF. There is a fairly easy way around that. Just go online and search for PDF to image converter, and you get lots and lots of free ones that you can do. This one, for example, you can just kind of drag a PDF in there. And then you can just say convert entire pages. Some of them have a freemium website that you need to sign up to, but just download the file uh, in this one or in another one if it doesn't quite work. And once it's in an image file, just drag and drop it back into here and then it should work. Let's look at another example. So I'm gonna to go to data and then get data from file from PDF. And then here I've got a, the multi-page one. I'm going to import it. And here it actually is smart enough to get me the table on all three pages. So I'm going to click on load. And here are my titles. And it's done this pretty well. It's actually included everything from the three pages and removed the repeated titles, which is very smart of it. Remember that my PDF looked like this so it had repeated stuff on each page, but it's removed that to bring it into here. This doesn't always work though, and we will look at more complex examples, but for now we can do the same click of right-clicking and pasting there and remove this and bring it back up. So more complex PDF files don't work quite as smoothly. So here's an example of one. This is uh, 56 pages and each one sort of has um, multiple tables, they might end at different points, and there might also be some text in between. So we want to fix this. We also have multi-row headers here where we have population and total female male. So a lot of the methods don't quite work as smoothly with these kind of files. But as a stepping stone to that, let's look at one folder with multiple PDF files. They're all of the same format. So this is the first one. This is the second one, and the third one looks identical. So it's the one we already imported, but it's split over multiple files. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to copy it, and then let's go back into Excel. So here in Excel, I'm going to go to Get Data from File, and I'm going to choose from Folder instead of from PDF. And I'm going to 
navigate to it, I could paste it like this, or I could navigate otherwise. It doesn't have anything in it because it's only showing folders at this stage, so I'm going to press open because it does have the three PDFs, as we can see here. So here I'm going to choose combine and combine and load. This is the simplest method, and it works if you have a really, really super simple one. So choose which one you want to load to. For example, if I paid, choose page one, I can press OK. They have to be identical on all sheets, otherwise it doesn't work quite that smoothly. Um, this pops up, the queries and connections pane. We're going to dismiss that. but We will look at it later on. And here it is again. As you can see, my headers are in this row. I'm going to need to bring them up there. And I do have my repeated headers two more times because it is multiple pages. Uh, you could avoid that sometimes if you get it from the table, but it doesn't always work that smoothly. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually adjust it just like we've done before, but I'm not going to show you those steps in this video. So I'm going to go to get data from file from folder again, and I'm going to choose the more complex one. I'm going to choose multi-page PDF and press open. Now here it just gives me, there's only one file in the folder, and this is the technique if you have a more complex PDF that didn't work with the method of just combining it in the normal way. So from here, if I go to combine, it's not going to work because it's going to try and combine data across multiple files, but actually I just have one file, so it's not going to be the perfect way. I have table one, table two, table three, um, and then I have page one, page two, page three. So I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to choose get data from folder again, go to the same one and press open. Now I'm going to choose transform. And this is actually going to open up the Power Query Editor. That's a whole new window that's not even Excel anymore. Um, that has these four different tabs. It has queries pane on the left and some query settings on the right. We're not going to look at this in too much detail. Uh, I have some other videos about Power Query because I think it's a fantastic tool. But all you need to do is look here and see that there is only one file. If not, you want to um, filter it to only include the file name that you want using the regular Excel style filters. And you just want to do the next steps that I'll walk you through. Click on Add Columns, go to Custom Column, and choose pdf.tables brackets content like this. Now, um, just make sure that it's written exactly as shown here. And what I mean by that is you need the same capital letters for the first letter of each word. You need the dot to appear here and you need the brackets to be in exactly this position. Press OK. I'll paste this into the description as well, so you can reuse it if you need to. So as in the custom column in add columns, and then you should see here it says custom and table. We don't want the other stuff, so we're going to right click on this, the header name, and choose remove other columns. Next, we're going to click on this one and just press OK with the defaults. Then we get this, we have page name and page kind and the actual data. So we're going to filter this to only include pages. We don't want the tables. And then here we're going to expand it and press OK like that. So now we have over 1,000 rows, and these are what we've expanded. So here we have the columns in our actual table showing like this. And you might remember that it had population, total, male, female, and then here it had sex ratio and household size. And if I show you what that looks like in the original file, it looks like this as the headers, where I have this over two rows. I have here a population, and then the next row says total, male, female. So in general, it's not great to set up your data with multi-row headers. Here it's done, so that's okay but we're going to fix it as we go along. So firstly, we don't care about these three columns. So we're just going to pick the columns that we want to hold down shift to the end, right click and choose remove other columns. Same thing we did earlier. 
Next, we're going to say, well, we don't need this stuff up here. So we're going to remove a lot of these extras. Now with Power Query, you can't just say, I want to remove this row. You need to go to the Home tab, Remove Rows, Remove Top Rows, and I'm going to choose two because the one that says just population isn't important to me. And then I'm going to say, well, use first row as headers here on the Home tab. Uh, this one, I'm going to rename them as I need to. They've worked out more or less okay, but I can double click and rename them. So total population like this. And then over here, I can see that this one is not what I want. I also don't want the total urban rural at the beginning of it because it doesn't follow the same structure as everything else. In effect, this is the commune name for the rest of it, but it is giving you a summary at the top of each table. Again, looking at it from this perspective, this stuff does not follow the same structure as the rest, so I'm just going to remove it. So to do that, I'm going to uh, filter out the blanks from this column. So I'm going to choose here, remove empty. And then I'm going to filter out the blanks from this column as well. So it's good to just remove empty in the ones where you see that it's blank. Alternatively, I could have done here and remove total urban rural, but there might be slightly different words that it wouldn't get. So remove empty is safest. Then here, this is called um, code. This is called name like that. So you can double click to rename them super easily. And what we next get is that we do have the repeated headers as we had before. But if I scroll down, I can see that the, the common thing they have, in, they have across all of them is that this one says null in the name column. So I could filter out the word total here, but I find the safest way is to filter out the nulls in this one and choose remove empty. And then you get this table that appears like this. It's not exactly right. For example, here it's shifted one over to the right. You might want to manually fix that up either in Excel after you load it or in Power Query if you are more advanced with Power Query. And when you're done, you can press close and load on the home tab. And then it should create a new worksheet with what you have put in like this. Notice that it doesn't always get it perfect and you might need to do some manual cut and paste afterwards. Or if you want to get it exactly perfect, then you can do more advanced manipulations in Power Query, which is a tool I really advise learning. But this will get you most of the way without too much effort if you follow those exact steps. So if you liked what you saw, then I release weekly videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want to see weekly videos about that. Thanks for watching.